Hey guys, what's going on? It's Victor Chambers back with another video. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. On this channel, I bring you tips, strategies, and advice to empower you on your real estate journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe as I'll be uploading weekly videos to provide value to you. So you might've seen a recent video I posted about eight of the most common myths that sellers believe about the home selling process. But in this video, I wanna pivot to talk to my home buyers out there. Whether you're currently in the home buying process or you're looking to get started, I think this video will be extremely valuable to you. So let's debunk nine of the most common myths that buyers believe. Myth number one, my family member has a real estate license. They will help me. Oh Lord, why we gotta start with this one? Now look, I'm all for keeping it in the family if you feel that that's the best thing for you to do. However, I will say the home buying process is stressful enough dealing with the opinions and advice of family members and other people involved, let alone a family member that you choose to be your real estate agent. Remember, this decision is about you. The more opinions you allow to influence your home buying decision, the more likely you will become indecisive, question your realtor, and ultimately not make a decision at all. It's best, in my opinion, to choose an agent that's not a family member as they are a neutral third party that can be completely objective when helping you make a home buying decision. Myth number two, we'll get a better deal if we actually go directly to the listing agent. The listing agent's first responsibility is to the seller. They've signed agreements and have built rapport with the seller over a certain period of time, and the seller trusts that the agent will operate in their best interest at all times. Now, there is a such thing as disclosed due agency in many states, and that means that effectively an agent can represent both a buyer and a seller in a transaction. And believe it or not, it can be done successfully. After all, realtors are governed by a code of ethics which require them to be fair and honest to all parties in a transaction. However, with that being said, it's absolutely best to work with a buyer's agent so that you know that your interests are being represented 100%. You want your interests to be upheld and not compromised. Myth number three, we can find the right house if we look long enough. I mean, you'll find anything if you look long enough. But let me tell you, there is no such thing as the perfect house. As of the time of this recording, we're in a seller's market in New Jersey where we're seeing a ton of demand, but not enough inventory to actually meet the demand. Additionally, as a buyer, you're not necessarily unique. There are tons of other buyers out there looking for perhaps exactly what you're looking for. And these buyers are writing offers and competing for the perfect house as well. It's prudent to be honest and realistic with yourself about what features and amenities that you may be willing to trade off in a home. After all, it doesn't take much to turn that living room from flamingo pink to agreeable gray. Shout out to Sherman Williams. Myth number four, the home values posted online are more accurate than what my realtor thinks. Y'all, don't get me started on this estimate. I mean, as real estate agents, we're looking at market activity all day, every day to understand what is selling, how fast it's selling, and for how much. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Zillow doesn't have all the data. Myth number five, it's smart to offer way under asking price for a house that we really want. How many times I gotta tell y'all it's a seller's market right now? You see, the quickest way to not begin a negotiation is to make an offer that is egregiously low and insulting. You run the risk of not even receiving a counter offer from the seller. And I've even seen cases where a seller would refuse to accept any future offers from that buyer because they made an insulting offer. So in this market where properties are being sold with multiple offers above list price, it is important to submit an offer that is supported by comps and one that demonstrates a strong financial position. Myth number six, sellers have to fix anything that's wrong with the property or compensate the buyer for repairs. Hmm, maybe, but not necessarily. Again, in an environment where sellers are getting multiple offers over asking price, it's important to not overplay your hand. You see, I recently wrote an offer for a buyer that didn't go as far as to waive the inspection, but we did put language in the offer to indicate that repair requests would be limited to mechanical, structural, electrical, safety, or environmental issues. The bottom line is be smart about what repairs you ask for. Myth number seven, if we bid full price on the house, we can always renegotiate the price down when the inspection reports come in. I need you to rewind this video about 60 seconds. Myth number eight, we can worry about getting a loan once we found the perfect property. Well, the reality is, is that as a buyer, you should have a pre-approval before you even step foot in a house. Why? Well, number one is that you need to make sure you are looking at homes that you can actually afford. And number two is that as an agent, I won't even be able to submit an offer for a home on your behalf 
without a pre-approval included. And these days, listing agents are actually calling the lenders of the buyers they receive offers from as an extra measure of due diligence to vet the offer. And finally, myth number nine, rates are so low that we're gonna go buy a card before our house closes. Do not do it. You see, when you're in the process of purchasing your home, your lender is doing something called underwriting the loan. Part of that process is determine your credit worthiness and your ability to maintain a loan. Opening new lines of credit for a car, boat, wedding ring, credit cards, among other things, could jeopardize your ability to obtain a loan and close on your home. My advice is to get through the process, close on your new home, and then go ball out on your new yacht. Again, thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this information useful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.